Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's a Thursday night, so you know what iteration of the show this is. Zolo Mansions. You know, I'm really into doing shows now that are going to stimulate the mind, body, and soul of the people who are watching this program. If I can't stimulate you mentally, I'm not doing a good job. And I love having people on that can, you know, touch your mind, touch your mind, your body, your heart, your spirit, that can inspire you to on to greater and, and better things in life. So um, I'm not going to tell you who I have on just yet, unless you're reading the description, Sarah. No, I'm just <laughs> Yes, yeah, Sarah is back with us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to get into a very heavy topic right now. I suggest everybody get in here, hit the like button, hit the share button. Uh, you know, this is going to be a major one right here. So don't be afraid to share this, to let people know. Uh, it's important that we get busy. It's important that we talk. And all the questions that you guys may have in the chat room, don't be afraid to type it. Say, Zoe, ask uh, your guests this question. Or, Zoe, I have a question on this. Trust me, we gonna, in, in two hours, we're going to tear the roof off the muffler, as the legendary George Clinton would say. This is about to be crazy but as is commonplace you know what i do i support black owned businesses and it's important that i continue to do so because black owned businesses man they need to survive they need to thrive they need to survive so i met a brother his name is thomas he's an agent down in Texas. You, you trying to buy a house, you trying to sell a house. Uh, that's wrong, Sarah, R-E-W isn't on there. That's all right. That's okay, just take R-E-W off, dollar oh, sign, oh, so gosh, what, gosh, yeah. Gosh, gosh, gosh. But if you're trying to buy a crib in Texas, you're trying to sell a crib in Texas, you're trying to, if you already got a crib and you're trying to set it up for Airbnb, I've got your person, I've got your dude. All right, and I mean, he's got all types of uh, incentives for hooking up with him. If you're facing foreclosure, Thomas Hope's Investment Solutions buys houses with cash. His name is Thomas Hope's. Uh, if you wanna fix and flip real estate or Airbnb, and you do not want, or you don't know where to start, you can get a free consultation. I want you to go to his website, www.tsahc.org forward slash realtors forward slash profile forward slash 45993. You got to check him out. Down payment assistance and specialization loan programs are available for first time home buyers and heroes such as teachers, police officers, firefighters, corrections officers, veterans, and EMS personnel. This brother is going to help you. If you're trying to sell your home and you need an agent, you can go to his website and put in Zoe Sells. He's got a code for y'all. It's a promo code. And you know, you're gonna get you know, some discounts. And he's gonna be, uh, trust me, this is a person that I've vetted out. This is a person that I've vetted out solid brother. I would not put him on my program and platform if he wasn't. Talk with Thomas on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Mr. T. I hope that, you know, my eyes, man. Mr. T.O. Hopes, or I guess that's T.A. Hopes. I think it's T.A. Hopes, right? Follow him over there. Black owned business, flipping cribs, selling cribs, buying cribs, 
setting up Airbnbs. He gonna help you do it. He has been certified by me. What he said, renting, renting in Central Texas, receive $50 back at, uh, at move-in when using the promo Zoe Rents. This dude got all types of Zoe names as promo codes. Zoe Sells, Zoe Rents. What about Zoe Buys? He's got a $500 cash back at closing of a home for using the Zoe Buys promo code. Get with him. All right, holla at him on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Mr. T.A. Hopes. Get at him. Oh, and then I've been on this. I've been using this. This right here, this X-Wolf testosterone booster. I'm getting old. It's all right. It's fine. I've got gray hair. I'm a silver fox now. Hey. What's up with all these pictures, Sarah? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. She's, you looking for the X-Wolf. I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop lying. You know what's going on. X-Wolf testosterone booster. Y'all got to get with this guy, man. He's got a great product as well. You know, I use all of the products. That's how I'm able to co-sign. If I use this, and was still on soft serve status, then, you know, I, I would not be promoting it. X Labs, go to X Labs, SUPS, right? Labs is plural, X, the, the letter X, Labs, SUPS.com, all right? X Wolf is the product, X Labs, SUPS.com is the website. And then, of course, there's Total Package Energy. You know I've already had one of these before the show. Total package energy, man. Greatest energy shot in the game. It's better than all of them. And guess what? It's getting even better. I think they're doing away with these bottles here. And they're coming with a new, I think it's 18 times more concentrated. It's nanotechnology now. Now you just put a little bit under your tongue and boom. You're off to the races. But I told you, if you're lazy and you're not busy, and you're just loafing around on the house, at the house, you don't want to be on this. You got to be, you got to have projects. You got to be busy. Then, of course, Total Package Energy has their pea protein, right? It's unflavored, no added sugars, gluten-free, soy-free, it's vegan, and it's made of pea, pea, not urine, the vegetable, pea protein, 20 grams per serving. Tell them Zoe Williams sent you, black on business, all right? Then you have the hurricane report. Let's see, she's gonna, she's gonna struggle to find it. No, it's right here. There it is, the hurricane report. Write it, take action, maintain freedom. Go to h-report.com or .news, h-report.com news. Uh, write it, take action, maintain freedom. This is an alternative news source, much like Al, Al Jazeera, for ADOS Americans. So please, please, please support her, uh, their brand. It's led by a woman. You guys always hear me say her and then pull back and say they. She has a team. It's a whole group of people, but it's led by a black woman. And I love supporting Black-owned businesses, especially those that are headed up black, by black women. So h-report.news. Get there right now, the Hurricane Report. Terry Lomax. I might, I might promote Terry Lomax. You know what's going on. You're just picking all the wrong pictures. No, it's, I, fine. It's, so just a, it's fine. It's fine. It's a glitter. I'm, I'm doing just like uh, <laughs> Bruce Wayne's father. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, I might promote Terry Lomax for the rest of my life. Because she did such a damn good job on the master class. That's right. Terry Lomax, among others, was behind the master class. She came to me with the ideas. Oh, you should do a curriculum. Terry Lomax 
built out the tech side of the master class. Man, we couldn't have did it without her. Now, Terry Lomax is doing it. She dropped a new book. Go get her book. Do you understand? The glow up. You want to blow up? No, you want to glow up. Terry Lomax. Check her out. TerryLomax.com. But also every Monday and every Wednesday. Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you're feeling ambitious and you want to create your own podcast, she can help you build it. She can help you format it, structure it. She can help you monetize it. She's not a game. She's a force and a power and a hurricane in this space. If you're serious, go see TerryLomax.com. Also, Made Man Sockery. She told me her sales are very low. She also told me to stop yelling at you guys. <laughs> she was like, you got to stop yelling. Don't, don't yell at them anymore. If maybe they just don't wear socks. <laughs> she's from Texas. She's a gorgeous sweetheart. I think she's from Dallas. What you mean, uh? Houston's better. Why would he? OK. She's <laughs> Tribalism in Texas happening right now. <laughs> Made man sockery. High-end socks for the high-end male. If your sock game is nice, you know your shoe game got to be nice. And you can't have whack shoes with nice socks and whack pants. So your pant game got to be nice, too. Made man sockery. You can look her up on Instagram under the same name. Go support her small black-owned business. And of course, the final thing I'm going to promote is the University of You. Zoe What Masterclass. I'm telling you right now, the masterclass is available right now. There's four modules. It's four and a half. It's five and a half hours long. As I mentioned before, Terry Lomax helped me build this platform out Go to ZoeWhatMasterclass.com right now and sign up. Uh, like I said, man, we, we drop so much information on relationships. We drop so much information on the journey within. As a matter of fact, this whole show is about to be a damn masterclass in and of itself. I'm urging everyone to sincerely invest within themselves. This is a self-investment. That is the best kind of investment you can make. The university of you. Relationship is the university of you. This is the relationship masterclass put together by yours truly. And it's available right now. Go to ZoeWhatMasterclass.com. That is the end of the community empowerment segment. Now let me introduce my guest. Brother Man has a monstrous following. When I say monstrous, I mean huge. I mean large. I mean expansive. I mean pervasive. The man is out here doing the work. And I love people that are doing the real work, right? The work that turns that internal light on within others. The best way to turn the internal light on within others, in my experience, has been being the example of what you're talking about. And this brother right here is definitely the example of what he's talking about. And I think we're going to have a sprawling, pervasive, deep, inspirational show today. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my special guest, Seven Bomar. Yeah, what's up, bro? Like, ding, 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 <laughs> ding. But wait a minute, though. That first, I had to set you up right. I was in stitches at, at certain points. I mean, Bruce Wayne's dad. I mean, come on. Where are you? It's I'm trying to it's come fine. in here with composure and everything, and now, man, I'm I'm, I'm wet over here. So <laughs> wow, we give we give thanks. You know, just being up in here, you know, with the legend. I mean, it's amazing. I'm so I'm so ready to get to it. You know, it's a train. 
So, you know, we're about to leave the station, but yeah, we're here now. Thank you so much. Man, <laughs> let's let's just pull the let's just pull the wool off. We don't want nobody to know nothing but the truth today. So Absolutely. as we discussed yesterday, and, and Sarah, if you could just turn his volume up for me so I can hear him a little better. But as we discussed yesterday, I said to you, man, we should talk about relationships because I believe that all these ancillary means of coming together, it's easy for people to say, oh, we need unity. But you can't have unity if your relationships are broken. You can't have solid relationships if you're broken. So it all comes back to you. It all comes back to the university of you. It comes back to you healing you so you can be with another healed whole person and you guys can now have a healed home. And that healed home can be an example of what a healed whole home looks like. And then that begins to spread throughout the community and then the world. I heard Krishnamurti say it, and I'm a lover of Krishnamurti, by the way. Krishnamurti uh, said, the enemy is you. It's not your partner. The enemy is you. And I feel like as a community, especially African-American community, bro, we have been such mimickers and parrots of the dominant society that whatever white supremacy or white wealth or white establishment or white accomplishment says is good for you, we mimic that benchmark. And thus... We're not authentic in our relationship pursuits and goals. So I throw this question to you, man. How does black, or how do black men and women cast off the standards, beliefs, and ideations of a society that has never really embraced our success or, or accepted them? How do we throw off their expectations and create our own? Wow, that's a big question. But I can say for sure when we answer it, it's going to work for everybody. And that's always the, the ability of being the original and the pioneer is that you know, even when you go through the struggle and it could be insurmountable for everyone else, if you get through it, then that would be a template that everyone can use so we can kind of make sure we never have those as hurdles again. Mm. And I really thought about this build today because I knew it was going to be about relationships. And man, relationships is one of those one of those questions that if you get asked, as I joked about earlier, you kind of want to have your you was freestyle for a moment, but you may want to have something written down because when you slip up about relationships, you know, it it just really, really hits a person in a, in a wild way because everyone is in a relationship. And so what I can only talk about today is just my experience in relationships and what I've learned also in metaphysics and how I see things connect. I would say for sure, you know, that could be seen as an opinion if it starts hitting someone in the, in the way where they just feel like it's stinging and it's burning and they can't accept what I'm saying. And... You know, also, it's like when we even say relationships, we put this huge book, boom, on the on the table. Right. And then when we open a book, I would say the first chapter then would be titled communication. So it's like for me, if I was to try to approach relationships, because what I realize is, is that this is a conversation anyway that would be like a, a fork in a road. Because you have two, you have two different options that the listener may or may not be able to take. That's going to wholly govern how they really look at relationships anyway, and what they feel like they're capable of doing within a relationship. Uh, and that's, of course, well, one, am I in the position right now to still try to find a relationship to be in? And what I mean by this is that obviously we have some young folks on the line. They're not really spoken for. We have some folks later on in their lives that have kind of been on their own for a minute. So that is one position. And then the other one would be that now you're in a relationship and you have some real binding, some oaths going on, not even just that piece of paper, but some kids. 
and or some agreements or you know maybe you got you know <laughs> she's buying your she's buying your your Clyde or whatever and and it's like y'all never gonna part and so you're just gonna go through it and experience it. That's another avenue of dealing with relationships. Mm -hmm. So if I speak to both of those, then I will have to come into like a universal, I will have to come into a universal format because there's many things about like how the mind works and how society integrates. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I guess the easiest thing for me to do with all of this is to kind of set a template or a blueprint early on that we could keep following through this conversation that will give us the ability to look into something so deep as relationships, but actually make it somewhat simplified. Mm -hmm. And I struggle for this because obviously with such when you find out everything is a relationship, everything is communion, everything is communication, it'll hit you that, you know, this this is the first book, really. And it's often the book that most people never even graduate. Like, there's knowledge that already says that even, let's say, uh, most men are still actually in the stage of puberty when it comes to being able to use their sexual energy the way that our ancestors are using the sexual energy, like hmm. if we measured that out. Hmm. Then there's also now a situation like like you spoke on earlier where you got people immersed in a realm that really wants to put a, a shell or a mold over you and have you acting out at like that in a in a fast juxtaposition. Uh, so what I mean by that is they can say, hey, this is what it's ideal to be like, how to talk, how you should respond to certain things. And then you get one person who adapts that shell and then could come home to someone that may have not even adapted it as much and it will start acting on them. So it's like a point to point system where each person confirms their falsehood. Mm. As time starts boiling in more and more, what one finds is, is that they're for sure not themselves anymore. And even being able to become themselves is being uh, uh, completely uh, removed because they cannot remove themselves from the projection that everybody else is putting on them because of who they pretended to be. <laughs> now, this is the psychological construct and it is a metaphysical construct. So it's great that we're at this point because at least we can go in because when was the last time we even had a sanctum or a session to be able to discuss such matters? Even the people who were one... Uh, <laughs> even be able to utilize those things or comprehended them. Mm. Like people have kept massive books around themselves their whole lives that they have not been at the aptitude to really understand what is written in those books. Mm -hmm. So just having that knowledge is not enough. So it's great to actually go into the book of ourselves because then we get a chance to read things based on our experience. Mm. So if I was to answer the question shortly, what can one do in this stage right now to be able to correct the situation that is going on in tyranny that's now affecting their relationship level is 2020. So I would have to introduce an array, almost like uh, several uh, bombardments of ordinance mm -hmm. to be able to give you multiple tools that you can use to navigate these different relationships in life. Because there was like a saying that, so the boss fires the husband, the husband comes home, hits the wife, the wife spanks a child, the child then kicks the cat, the cat kills the rat. Who really loses here? Oh. I think it would be the rat. But anyway, because he <laughs> lost his life. But what I'm saying is there's like a ripple effect that is happening when different things are pinging off of you in the reality, and now you need to go and get what from this significant other? Energy, oh. <laughs> power, mm -hmm. that... The goal, of course, of a relationship is for the two beings to be able to motivate and stimulate each other to basically turn a perpetual wheel. Mm -hmm. And so, and with that wheel, they can create anything. But if that wheel is going in the opposite direction, then they start to degrade each other. So wow. there is a natural yin-yang process that goes on between these two elements, if you may. Mm -hmm. However, when that process comes out of an alignment, it's like even if I'm in a Bugatti and I'm flying down the freeway, if my tire is off balance in the back, I'm feeling that. And that's just destroying the whole ride. So I feel like that as human beings, massive beings, with all these wheels, we have to kind of begin to designate how we're governing our energy and our relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. This then requires us to actually really understand energy from its elemental level. Let's say it's 
I don't know now they they're it's oriental level okay so mm -hmm. it's ancient oriental level and this is sometimes as simple as fire earth wind water and for us to realize when as water beings many of the the melanin dominant are actually water beings like they call the lao the rivers the snake the movement the dancing the verbs the tones the spirituality the flow dealing with fire beings which is a totally different element and then having to figure out where is let's say our pop where is the other element that is allowing us to not be completely exposed to benefit from whatever it is the element that's trying to act upon us but at the same time not degrade who we are so just like if a pot is sitting on the stove it's under it's on the fire's on the underneath and then the water is is boiling and this is now how we're going to get something cooked but if mm -hmm. you throw the water right on the fire one of them are going to perish mm -hmm. so this is so, relationships so do us this favor because a lot of people are in here in this chat room right now who are being bombarded with this powerful, meaningful content. I want you to take us slowly. What mm -hmm. are the different elements? When you said a fire person and a water person, I'm assuming there's an earth person and an air person. Can you give us a brief primer on what is a water person and how they manifest in your life. What is a fire person and how they would manifest in your life? Of course, I, I would assume this is via behavior, right? So walk us yeah. through and give us a, a, a basic primer of these different elemental people that come into your life. <laughs> you know, anytime a person is being initiated into the deep mysteries, they're taken through a trial by the elements. Mm -hmm. And so this means that we're still standing in front of technically the biggest thing, the things that make everything. So there is, there's a grade to this. Mm -hmm. So let's try to walk up that grade kind of like this rather than like this. Right. Right. So when we see what the elements really are, we learn, notice just on a very simple level that I'm able to blow, which gives me the wind. I'm able to spit, which gives me the water. I'm able to do the har, mm -hmm. and I can feel the fire. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, I got the earth because I'm sitting in it. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, what we learn is, is that the body is actually not just one element even though the reality will, in its temperaments, want us to just try to be one element. I call that pigeonhole. It's like, you just be this. But what this primarily has to do with is it has to do with the composition of not only how your DNA is formulated, but really where you've been born. Because your DNA is formulated from what you're consuming in the territory that you're in. Mm -hmm. So if you come from a specific place, if your ancestors come from a specific place, they're eating all of the elements and, and of course, breathing in all of the noble elements, et cetera, in that area. And this is formulating the construction of the DNA over time. Mm -hmm. So this formulation then, to try to simplify it, because this could be something as complex as CRISPR and editing DNA strings and all that, to something as simple as saying, well, what is the predominant ruling element, the totem of this particular person, so we know how to deal with them. Mm. And where this fire, earth, wind, water thing started being able to be applied to even, let's say, the races, if you may, of the planetary system. However, we find no races or nations that actually have the names in which they refer to themselves as. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it could be very tricky when I even say an African or when I say a Caucasian or a Native American. Now, all those terms are very loaded. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like Mother Goose and Grimm, you know, playing mm -hmm. with the language. And it's really like, so that's like the disclaimer that when I say a certain race, I'm saying so that you can identify that in your space and time right now. So when we look at, let's say, for instance, our Earth people, our Earth people would be more of our indigenous or our Native American. 
And as Earth as an element, and this is what was learned with the platonic solid, is Earth slows things down. It makes things colder. Right. What a lot of people think. And it slows things down and it puts things into a form. So it takes rapid moving energy, i.e. fire, and then it slows it down and turns it into something that's steel, that's like a vessel. And so this is why platonic solids, again, are important only from the aspect that they actually show the shapes that Earth actually uses to form and create the vessels that are here on this in this plane. Mm -hmm. So also there's a characteristic. There's literally an attitude, a temperament, a personality behind an element. All are really the elements, and the master is able to raise above the elements. So the temperament of Earth, again, is that okay, it's, it doesn't really like changing. It actually confines the energy. Also, as a people, they don't feel like they own the earth. They feel like that they're the guardians and the custodians of the earth. There's a deep level of civilization because they're naturally more rooted. So there's things about earth anyway that apply to earth. And so when you learn the races that correspond to that energy, you say, aha, mm -hmm. that is why they do what they do. Now, of course, to ele every element, there's a positive and there's a negative. This is in order to keep the poles oscillating. So, of course, when we go to, let's say, our Alkibulanians, then we have the water people. And as I mentioned before, lots of dancing, lots of shanking, lots of moving. And their instrumental aspects of dealing with the reality are always centered around things related to sexuality, tantra, kundalini, and well, that's in its original form, and then also ritual, spirituality, these kind of things, intuitive things. And then as we keep going forward, we find that our melanin recessive or our European is actually from fire, being themselves able to consume or break down complex things, even entire civilizations, and make them all alike. When fire burns things, it makes everything the same. It can actually go over boundaries or eliminate boundaries and does not respect boundaries. And then we have our earth people, or excuse me, our air people, which are our orientals who are very systematic and methodical, who really work with systems of breath early and uh, even our breathing traditions come from the ancient Orient. So also, I, I do want to say this because that's the primer on this, just to give you the gist of it. Mm -hmm. I would say that you, of course, have where then when the element turns into its distorted state, let's say it's negative, even though, you know, you got to use these terms properly. So we'll just say distorted state. Let's say a distorted water is like a swamp. It doesn't flow. So snakes accumulate. There's a there's a basically a poison. It, this can happen, especially when the religion has been or the spiritual subset has been heavily tampered with and the being has been over sexualized. Fire keeps warm, but when not checked, definitely clings on to things and burns everything, looks for more and more fuel, collapses boundaries in order to 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 find more and more fuel to burn. So we see in these these uh these elements that the master comes into play, which is you, because when you realize all these elements are acting out on you and what you have to be is you have to be the navigator that learns how to use these different fuels into your motivational system, if you may, to propel you to where you're going hmm. or where you, want, where you have your things set to go. So people know me for blending different disciplines and and just listening to you, right? I'm 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 hearing the astrology, the fire, air, earth, water, uh, but I'm also hearing communication styles, right? That you spoke of earlier, like what you know, what's your communication style, right? And yes. what 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 I do understand about, and then you can build on this. What what I do understand about this. Say, say, take your communication styles. You have collaborative, competitive, cooperative, compromising, avoidant. And what they will say, what, what communication experts will say, is no one is monolithically just one of those. Hmm. You, you kind of flow in and out of all of those. Absolutely. But you do have a predominant space that yes. you find yourself in most of the time. 
Are you yes. competitive or combative? Are you collaborative or compromising? Are you avoidant? And each one of these styles have some type of effect or result when used. So yes. I'm listening to your breakdown, you a fire person versus a water person. And I saw how you broke that down. You said Africa is like water, right? Uh, dancing and movement and fluidity. Right. Yes. The, then you then you use the Orient to explain air, logical. But what's interesting is like, and I'm I'm piecing the pieces together, listening to the piece that you've brought to the table. When we study feng shui, feng shui, the term itself means water and air, or yes. air and water. Why? Because air and water both have currents and move the same way, right? Yes. And so it's about the flowing of energy. So when I'm looking at relationships, we have been subject to a hijacking of this type of knowledge that leaves us kind of floating in the wind, so to speak, with regards to how we pull all of this knowledge together and then bring it into ourselves, heal what's going on within ourselves, and then be this example to our partner. And then our partner is the example to us. In other words, the teacher-student dynamic is accepted and embraced, and then we heal together. We may not stay together, because you know one misnomer is if we're healing and growing and evolving that we're getting closer. That's one right answer. Another right answer is we can also heal and grow apart, right? That relationship could be the catalyst for growing apart as well. But yes. in context of how our community is right now, divorce being the latest wonderful thing to do. It seems like everybody's getting divorced. Dr. Dre's wife divorced him after 24 years. Uh, Tracy Morgan's wife di divorced him. Offset just got, uh, got the papers from Cardi B. Then you look at someone, say, like Willow Smith, who just did an article talking about polyamory and how monogamy builds insecurity. I think all of these things come about because people don't understand the spiritual nature of relationship. Can you give us a definition of what the spiritual relation or, or the nature of the spiritual aspect of relationship? That's what I want. I want you to give me a breakdown of the spiritual purpose of relationship. Because most people don't know it. Most people are following social norms and standards. What is the spiritual purpose of relationship if there is one. Wow, I mean, you went through, I'll, I'll get back to what you were saying earlier because I still wanted to build on some of that, but just to, it, to answer the question directly, I put together just two videos and it's called The Goddess and the Explorer where I go in on this for about three hours because it does in respect deserve that because you have to keep going over it again and again if you're because obviously we're here talking and we're expecting that we're, we're here in love and we want our brothers and sisters to understand what we're saying and for them to, to change something right right so that is that when we come in on the work we can even feel like okay they, they ain't got it yet they ain't got it i gotta keep going and it's like you're breaking down a wall because really you're you're deprogramming someone so when i'm able to jump on these lines and even build on a specific topic i can tell when i've in that session been able to breach in a person's mind where they may be resisting that truth. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to say if if some of this just flies over the head, it doesn't seem applicable, still check the goddess and explore out where I elaborate on this further. But it's in the symbolism of what you see over and over again is you see one being that that functions as like a a, a vault, if you may, that still has no perceived end or beginning. Okay, so we could call this the womb. Mm -hmm. While we have another symbol or geometric shape or in all levels it exists as the same thing that wants to now poke into the envelope and then go in and explore 
all of what is available and that the actual the form that is surrounding it does not have an actual comprehension of what is all available from how we perceive things. So it uses that explorer form that is going to go over and experience everything with it as a way of storing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you then look at the human being, the male and female, you find that the male and the female are perfect extensions for this process that is also being replicated on a microcosmic level. Mm -hmm. so they're like the, to the true creation turned inside out. And then in this process, there is like a, a beacon, let's say like a, a point where there's, there's a conception that there will be a total restoration and this total restoration harkens to the awareness that we actually do still contain the masculine and the feminine poles. Mm -hmm. And that if externally in life, which I believe is something has to be that something that has to be accomplished internally first, externally in life, if you're able to to unite with beings on that kind of level, you become way more proficient at understanding what, how your journey is actually going to be. Because, see, people think that sometimes when you maybe we leave this life and then we just know what to do after that. When has already been, been shown is actually a great deal of what you can learn here can assist you when you do glide on a body here. And, and the practicing ground for that is not only the physical reality, but also the, the dreams, what we call the dream space, mm -hmm. which some are calling even the astral plane. So this is like a place where you can test out what you would feel then as a theory, because it would be just a belief until you go in and experience and then now you know that that is absolutely what it is. So am I an absolute being that doesn't actually need anything external? Yes. Is that something that I'm supposed to be doing specifically in this life? This life is, is multifaceted. So that and other things that our ancestors want us to learn is actually also taking place in the same space. But hopefully at some point when you reach your crescendo, which I don't think all the time happens in a single life, when you reach your crescendo, you actually do do what every master knows you have to be able to do to turn on the energy within yourself. Hmm. And then you're able to fuse this point. So if you have an external relationship with the opposite sex and it's conflictive, for sure internally, as you've elaborated on in your, in so proficiently in your work, that there is going to be a conflict also going on inside. And these two are, are a mirror that somehow you are actually able to replicate this opposing force outside of you, because all elements have to do that. Those are like the, the master laws. That's not something you get a chance to change. That's the fields of resonance. So we have this ability to attract through resonance certain kind of people that become the yin yang to our force. And But if our force is not moving in the proper direction, it basically then attracts a person who pushes us into a war, a vortex. See, that's even what the word divorce mean when I broke it down etymologically, because I thought it was a very powerful word. Anytime you put die on something and then vor, a divor, I mean, what the hell is this? This is like a spell within itself. And what it is is a, a, a mechanation or action or energy that actually rips things, it rips things asunder, like uh, the energy just being dispersed all over the place. How does that happen? That obviously happens when like they talk about Sirius A, Sirius B, or how star systems will start this dance around each other and the energy will start building. And if at a certain point that field doesn't maintain co its coherency, that's what it's called, field coherence, even in physics. If it doesn't remain its coherence, it's going to shred and then rip apart and then throw off lots of energy and lots of force, as you see folks do it when they get into an argument. And things are going to be reflect, affected by that energy and then it's going to spin down to then do that again at some point when it gains enough energy. Here's the interesting part though because that just basically explains conflictive relationships. We also need to realize that there is a field around us that actually still benefits, maybe not what we would say is our personal field, but a field around us, a collective field that still benefits from energy overall. And this brings us back to that fire, earth, wind, water. It's as simple as that when we breathe in this oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. 
then that goes on and gets used for something else. So that carbon dioxide technically is our waste. Then when we look in nature, we find that actually quite a few beings is waste, especially the cattle, it's actually used to grow other things. And then when we go into earth and we figure out what the substrata really is and what things are made of, we find that it's predominantly waste stayed in the dense point for so long that it even becomes a diamond, it becomes a gem, it becomes a crystal. So we have to get familiar with this form or, 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 or form of foundation of realizing that our waste does indeed drive something else's next stage of life. But do you want to feel like shit all the time, I guess, is the real question that has to be asked, answered here, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's answered by a person. What Do you want to play your life out in that same role or, or, or that same element? Or are you ready to oscillate into what you truly are, which is everything? And then everything would then come in degrees. As we see, the schools have degrees. This is, a, this is in relation to the fire, the degrees of measuring fire or knowledge. Because see, knowledge, or what we call knowledge, is a fire element. That's why when women take too much of just knowledge, 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 and they want to be into this whole same subset that the explorer or the masculine is in, they can then burn out their system that is a water-based system. So it is basically you yourself realizing how to take your dosages of this fire, earth, wind, water, and when you need one of those or the other in order to be able to balance yourself. And that makes every person responsible for the energy that they bring to each other. This then also puts us in a point, I wanted to bring up something that you mentioned about how certain elements, they work really well together. Like mm -hmm. when we watch water and wind work together, we in the boat. Right. And I see in life that what we're truly trying to do on a metaphysical level is we're actually trying to actually not move with motivation. We're trying to just move. This would be basically like not having a motive all the time in order to have some energy. You know, most of the time people kind of need like, they need like a carrot in front of a rabbit, like even someone that is in love with me, something that me, I, 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 and so this is like a pole that's still open and is saying, okay, I, I need this to be able to, to turn on to turn me on mm -hmm. when really, you know, you have to also be on point with realizing, so what is that feeling and what is that essence? And can you begin to actually create it within your being? Because when you do that, you're going to attract the external one. That's This is a mirror system. So you're going to see that external person that is going to correspond to that. But I always feel like that if you really don't put it together first in the inside, it is more difficult to actually then create something on the outside in real time that actually basically you're trying to shape somebody and mold somebody into what you want them to be then. And so, that's what I meant in earlier part of the conversation where you have two different type of people. So mm -hmm. let's say, for instance, I start learning this knowledge along the way, but I'm married with five kids, right? Mm -hmm. Then I realize that, hey, this is pretty much how things are. If I'm going to accept this mold that I'm in, then that's how they're going to remain or I'm going to flip into another element. So if I want to flip it to an element, I got to actually change my environment. So I may go to my significant other and say, hey, I learned this knowledge. And it basically says the reason why we're kind of stuck is that we're not actually doing X, Y, Z because there's real criteria here. And that person may say, I'm not stuck. You're stuck. <laughs> and right then you're now at Bushido Blade basically of, okay, <laughs> what do I do now? Because this person that I'm seeing my life with is not ready to go up on an upgrade version 5.0 with themselves. And, you know, where are we at here? So this is what I find interesting about life because one of the things that's most difficult about relationships is how to move on from relationships and how to navigate. Because I always felt like anyway, from my experience, that people act like in relationships what you let them act like when you start showing them this person in the beginning. And, you know, to make it very clear, you know, just the, the blunt as it could be, I learned this from pimps. Watching pimps, I was like, why is she with this guy? I mean, this right. makes no sense to me. And, and in the end, I realized it was because that they never changed who they were and pretended like they were somebody else. So everybody that they attracted knew who they were. And since everybody has something they attracted to, that's why these people are around, because they wanted to really be that's the person they show. But if he came in like, oh, let's get married and let's do all this and I'm going to be with you. You don't have to sleep with me and all of this other stuff that, again, would be like a facade that some, that some guys put on, then the woman would be startled two weeks later if he said, hey, now I need you to get out on the strip. 
Now, again, this is a very coarse way of bringing this at everyone, but I'm telling you, it exists. Truth exists on all levels. So if you are coming at a person in a way that you are really not, it's on, this is like a ticking time bomb. It's only a matter of time before you're going to feel stuck in this being that you don't want to really be anymore. So, and so this is the, the, it, the thing going on relationships, because as you know, we could be the most instrumental in holding each other back. Right. <laughs> well, well, be, oh, well, well I, me, I used to have a simple term from it that it just meant, I just used to say they're under the armor. Right. So seven, let me jump in what real quick. Cause like you, you're covering several pieces and, and I want to, I want to make sure okay. we get all of these pieces because they're good pieces right here. And each one of them has significance. Uh, you jumped right into the space that I wanted you to go into uh, just, you know, just by being who you are. You're right there. Relationship as a mirror. Now, again, I'm a big Krishnamurti fan. He has a book called Relationship as a Mirror. Now, What's interesting about this concept, you used oxygen and carbon dioxide, right? Oxygen, it, it feeds our body, it feeds our cells, it keeps us alive. Carbon dioxide is the waste of that. That's what we breathe out. So oxygen and carbon dioxide would be mirrors of each other. But with mirroring, you find that our waste, like you said, was sustenance for trees, right? Trees let out oxygen, we breathe it in, and then it sucks in our carbon dioxide. That's a mirror symbiotic kind of relationship. You also touched on another point that I thought was very powerful. Number one, relationship is the classroom. Earth is the campus, and the feedback that you're getting from your partner, that mirrored feedback that you're getting from your partner, is the curriculum. Now, with that being said, you can't motivate, inspire, or grow your partner up in any way, shape, or form. All they can do is be receptive to the reflections that they're receiving from you and vice versa. This is your curriculum. You don't have to accept it. You can preempt the relationship by ending it. It's just like drop, dropping a class in college. I don't want to take this course. I'm out. But the spiritual component of relationship always puts you back in the same class you preempted. They just give you another person. They give you another body. But you're going to get that lesson. See, again, our society told us that we can feed our happiness, hunger, our meaningful, like we need, to, we need to feel appreciated, we need to feel accepted. We can feed all of that, right, by getting external things, accumulation. Accumulation of people, accumulation of material things, accumulation of family. We think by accumulating externally, that will satiate the internal hunger for happiness, approval, and appreciation. But what this society has not taught us is you attracted that person so you can uncover you, discover you, accept you, heal you, then get over you. Speak to that, that process there. It's basically like trying to put fire in your sails and get somewhere. Like we talked about how certain elements work well together. You know, if you got wind blowing in your cells, because wind is like a lot to do with the breath, and we do the breath personally, nobody's going to breathe for you. But the fire thing is, that's where that, I need that energy, I need that gratification. Even spirituality has reached this stage. The conscious community is like, they want Kundalini. And they have no clue 
what it would be like to turn that fire on and not have a good dose of water mm. and a few other elements to keep that balance. So you're, you're on it because you're, we're right at the door and saying, yes, in the relationship, I'm asking for a certain type of element that's going to keep me fueled, but it's going to burn stuff up after a while. And right. it's only a matter of time. And yes, that is a result of the environment that we're in. We're actually in the negative fire world right now. But the interesting thing is, is that this is an, also an elemental level, as we talked about earlier. There's a calendar that matches to this. And it says that right around the end of the year in there, we're transitioning in the air. Mm. Air, you know, as we're already seeing it. See, this shouldn't be some hocus pocus mumble jumble. Maybe we see it click poof. No, it's got you already see it coming. And air is that more of systematic Let's get some order here. Right. Air is like, you know, like when you sign up for Kung Fu and you get white belt. And now, you know, the distance from there to black belt is going to be a lot of discipline and training. Mm -hmm. So we find ourselves like right on the cusp of coming out of the almost opposite. And here's what's wild, how the elements work. You know how you don't really want to fan flames? So it's not really like we're going to necessarily you're going to see negative fire take that discipline of, of air too well, mm -hmm. right? So what the master, of course, is doing is anticipating, well, shoot, we're going to need a lot of earth, and we're going to need, and that's really how one navigates themselves through infinity. That's really what our ancestors were doing, is they was using the forces to propel them to where they wished to go. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they knew, they had enough sense. Here's another thing. They had enough sense to know when they were going retrograde or backwards, and not and, and, and not on purpose, okay? Because here's the weird thing. See, in music, music as an example is a hypnagogic scenario where a person is actually making their body respond opposite to what the actual sound is saying. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say in a lot of music, this is about spraying down the whole place and everybody that's in there and wearing a lot of whatever and hey come look at me a lot of fire basically mm -hmm. negative fire and the person but so these things the person should say no nah, I'm not I'm good on that right now that doesn't make sense for the natural love of life but instead they're making their body like yeah this is it baby and what that from the simplest level is like the Pied Piper on the flute because that can turn your compass if you may completely in the wrong direction to where like down is now up for you and good is now bad for you and basically you don't have any discernment so the most imperative thing in all ancient scriptures speak on discernment and that being the true gift and that naturally because we have this compass in us that says hey you know I don't think you should progress any further in that direction when we choose not to follow that our, that's when our controls are hijacked. Mm -hmm. and now, in, a, in that process, psychologically, what then occurs is there's an altar. And I spoke on this at length. And this, these altars match into that five that you were talking about with communication and how people communicate. Mm -hmm. But in this case, this altar is the oral, the schizophrenic, the masochistic, mm -hmm. psychopath, mm -hmm. and the masochist. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how they communicate or they being a person now who has this negative shell over them and because of, depending on the condition, a series of events, now this is the type of being that not only you're communicating with, but also they're communicating with that being to themselves inside of their mind thinking it's them. Mm -hmm. And that then becomes like the house of horror mirrors, right? Because then everything that you start encountering, and I noticed, because I'm talking take it from experience, so I noticed in life, everything that you then start encountering was totally unexpected. It's when, they call it, when it rains, it pours. Just all sorts of stuff happening. You can't even figure out where it even started versus a life where, especially like right now, since I got things you know, coming by as I can observe it, I can see things coming a long way away before I even dive in. I can give it like a, a period. And I think that that's what we talked about also earlier in this in this bill was, do you now really have the choice to choose who you want to be with 
And do you have the courage to make that choice? Because I feel like the conditioning, you know, if it's a color thing, whatever it is, the conditioning has made it difficult to make that power move. Wait, 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 that's big. Wait, that's, that's big. I like that. Let me, let, let's say it another way. Is the conditioning doing the choosing? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's an infinite wheel going in the wrong direction. That is perpetuality going into explosion versus implosion. Yeah. yeah. So then it is subject to time at that point because it's only a matter of time. All the critical events are going to now really take place that are going to derail a construct that is set up that way. And I would say, unfortunately, because as I said, I'm dealing with a negative fire force on the planet. So who is really the most equipped to deal with the negative fire force? Hmm. When they fight fires, what do they have a tendency to pull out first? Water. So this is why there's an attack on water. Now, Earth, Earth is like, you know, Earth is an element coming in and trying to deal with it. Like, let's say how Earth deals with fire. You have to pick Earth up and go and take Earth and dump it on fire. What I'm saying is, is that it's not Earth's place. I used to always say it's like a Reiki master. You're trying to explain the Reiki master about reptilians. <laughs> you know what I mean? This Reiki master needs to keep their mind very clear and pure and clean. And here you are explaining to them about e extra dimensional blood suckers. This, you, you got two different things completely out of elements. So again, this is where it's interesting how life kind of pans out because we're still sitting in a framework where 9 billion haven't even really kind of come to the process of turning wheels like this to realize what we're all in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I do really see this as it's not an everyone thing. It's actually like a real vineyard where there's an aging process going on literally. And once you hit whenever you ripen, then you come into this awareness of how important it is to have the balance going on around you, especially in your relationship at all costs. Wait, 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 wait. here we go. Cause you're hitting on something else. Let me, let me twist it another way. Let me flip it. In. So when you're talking about ripening, mm -hmm. the average mind is looking at this ripening process from this life. They'll say, Oh, well, at 32, you should, you should know and you should be ready. But most people don't understand that there's a, 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 a lineage of lives in terms of your soul, your spirit. And, and, and again, the Ifa, ancient Africans would say, every ancestor lives in you. You're the culmination of every ancestor. So they all live in you so back in the day for i'm from the south i'm from chattanooga originally and when i was born you would have big mama say bring that baby to me so i can see who who came back so sometimes you choose an experience and a life to be able to get a certain level of experience for this life to set you up for your next life there are ancient souls. There are old souls. I rarely hear people saying that they are ancient soul, but there are ancient souls. There are old souls and there are baby souls that are coming here to experience so that they can expand consciously. But what are they expanding into? Are they expanding into the unknown or are they expanding into other aspects of their expanded self. It's almost like a reintroduction to you by going through these different lifetimes that come with a certain amount of experiences to grow you up. Yeah. Speak to that. Yes. Oh, man. Man, you know how you got it all and you don't got nothing? <laughs> we working together, brother. They need us. And I, <laughs> I mean, okay, so I, I wanted to, you know how you say, we, we could flip it over. 
smack it down, rub it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if I feel like that these beings need to get also another perspective of that because you gave them an extreme amount, you give them a extreme gem, explain to them that, hey, this is not even a one life thing. This like, is not go even long. that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that sometimes because of the demoralization, they can't accept that. It's like, that's the birthright that was stolen, not being able to accept the, the infinite too, right? Right. So I want to flip the lens really briefly just to let everyone still see that. But some others have already adapted to this. It's, going to be 400 years or 500 years before we accomplish this and clearly there's an awareness that one is going to be living or alive during that time because they are entirely too selfish to do something that they're not going to be able to enjoy right okay so let me just bring that into clear context we are dealing with situations right now that have been progressively going a certain direction for at least four to five hundred years and the ones who deployed that specific plan seem to already be aware of something that would allow them to be animate during at least that 500 year period. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that could be without making it again, hocus pocus is just the awareness that we live through our children. Mm -hmm. And that if we are necessarily saying, okay, well, what am I going to enjoy in my 72 year process here on Terra? And seeing that as the end all finish all is gonna be a real buzzkill for most people with that kind of minimum scope of time because they're not gonna have enough of that to really accomplish anything in that mindset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's like a fish tank. The mortal mindset, the infinite mindset has an infinite space to go through versus the limited, limited fear base. I'm gonna die at this point, so let me get it for myself. Right, because also we see this happening in the reality now where most of the situations that we're dealing with is coming from the same beings that we're trying to recover. Right, but, so. but if you consider that we are in a new time zone, we are not yeah. in the time zone of the believer. We're in the time zone of knowledge, right? Uh, uh, the time of the fish has been replaced by the time of the water bearer. And this is a new age and we're changing and we're growing. Now is the time to understand homo deus. Not homo sapien, homo deus. Yeah, he was old. The God man, the yeah. God woman. Homo sapien was the wise man. Before him, that was Homo Havilus, the uh, Homo Erectus, the upright man. Then it was Homo Havilus before that, the, the man who used tools. But now we are moving into Homo Deus, the man of God, God men and women. In other words, discovering the divine within. We can now if we so choose, and you may push back on this, but we can now, if we so choose, decide to remember all the lives we've lived before and figure out what book or what chapter in the book we're in currently. See, when we're born, we're born with spiritual amnesia and we don't know what chapter of our book we're in. Yeah. And yeah. so we attract relationships to us that will remind you in a fragmental sense of which chapter you left off on. Now, when I say fragmental, understand that everything in physics was born out of ancient spirituality. So when the physics or when the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the what is the, the theoretical physicist will say everything in this reality is quantized. What he's saying is everything is fragmented. Meaning, time goes from eons to hundreds of years, to thou or eons, thousands, hundreds, ten decades, all the way down. Time goes all the way down to nanoseconds from eons. It's fragmented. 
right? So what I'm trying to explain to the people that are spirits having a human experience, I'm saying relationships are your classrooms that will give you fragmental information about the knowledge of self that is you. But you're not going to get the whole piece because everything on this plane is fragmented. Time is fragmented, right? Exactly. Not only time, but so is space. And you got to remember space and time because of Einstein's un uh, revelations are one and the same. So a lot of times we forget that relationships or we, we have to be reminded by people such as yourself and myself that relationships are inherently spiritual. You may have attracted a particular person in your life to reconcile a previous life's transgression. Oh. Right? You may be your grandfather again who did wrong by somebody 150 years ago, 200 years ago. And so you're attracting the same things to reconcile them because where there's no reconciliation, there is no growth. So you, you have to reconcile trauma. You gotta reconcile trauma in this life, but you also gotta reconcile trauma in previous lives if you wanna expand and grow to a higher level of consciousness, which opens the door to a higher level, listen to this word, ladies and gentlemen, to a higher level of relating. The brother seven said a, a, a key word earlier, and that word was communion. I need you to speak to them about what communion actually is. Man, this, this is it. This is it. <laughs> it's a spin-up. That's a, I mean, that's the easiest word that I could come up with. It is when we see that diagram of the cosmos, we see it, what they would say is centripetal and centrifugal, but this is basically a spin. And if you're spinning, because all of this, we created all of this. That's why I never allow anything to get any kind of that. It had power over it. It's ruling it. That's just how well I designed the game. If I'm starting to believe in that mm -hmm. it's a spin up. So when I take my field and I start spinning it in a way to where now I'm pulling everything in, time, yes. everything exploded, everything that became separate, all starts to come inside of me. And then at that point, that's it. Mm. And then we have that other direction where that's what's creating time. And now you have a myriad of all of the instances, literally in computers, we call them instances, Snapshots, framework, memory, DNA. We have all of that all in a field in order to in, in which we can explore. And then of course, as we talk about it like a record, the things that we do in that in that play, if you may, that's why we play music. The things that we do when they leave that thicker mark, like on a record, when it has leave, left that thicker mark on the vinyl. We can see the song, like anybody who works with music, you can see the song in the vinyl. So we do have things that become like broken record points for us where mm -hmm. we keep mm -hmm. looping in that. And of course we have others embedding data onto our, our strip, mm -hmm. right? So this power of being able to bring it all in, and this, this requires then that there's this moment, at least in life, and I just call this turning the field around. This is what changed my life, where instead of my energy pushing out this way, like this, I started pulling the energy in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was no more, there's a Jesus, there's a, 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 I don't know, a big bearded, there's no, there's a, this lover that I'm going to find, there's, there's this book. I used to be in on this book thing, for about, there's this book, and it tells you everything, it's this and this continuous and the energy was going on and it was like I was exhausting myself and you learn this even in relationship it's like chasing a woman when mm -hmm. you chase it she's gone it's like money money is also a cognitive women energy uh, triangles phi etc rectangles phi etc you're chasing the money the money is running off it's laughing at you mm -hmm. and you know when you get to the point you stand ground start getting a foundation up under you 
becoming dependable, mm -hmm. then other folks are like, hey, can I come over and dock into your, you know, session of what you have going on over there? Mm -hmm. Because it becomes a place where somebody would want to inhabit. And I guess that that is the key to all of this is that we want to attract something, but what, did it, what is it that we're attracting them to? Are we attracting them to the same nightmare that we're stuck in? Like, you know, just like we're talking about this whole awakening thing. What are we awakening people up to? Like, stay asleep. Let me fix this, right. you know, this group of folks that I got with me because you're going to wake up to a nightmare, baby. Right, right. Hey, you, you hitting on some powerful stuff. You're attracting that which you fear. The reason why is because fear wants to reconcile itself. Fear is useful in that way. What you are afraid of becomes an internal spiritual magnet that draws itself to you. But not for the purpose of commiserating, because you know, misery likes company, right? But no, you're attracting that which you fear so that you may overcome it. Yes. See, everything has a purpose. It's yes, not just to kick it. The karma right there. That's the true definition of karma. People think that karma, that's why in those books they says one should heavily consider the laws of karma and dharma before they utter the word. Because some think that karma is the bad one, dharma is the good one, and they miss the whole subject about how karma is a catalyst, as you're saying. Oh, it's got to be, you're going to learn, like, it's like your parents' house. It'll go back to the parents' house. So what are we doing here? Is it the switch? Right. Or, you know, is it the reward or is it the punishment that you're going to learn by? Because either way, you're going to have to learn something up in here. Oh, no, this is powerful. This is powerful. Let me tell you why. Sanskrit word karma, its definition means action. Mm. Now, let's flip the word action and, and update it for 2020. Right now. Corona time. Right? <laughs> action can be replaced with attention. The hunger for attention, the hunger for thirst. See, action, you want to keep doing. The reason why you want to do is because you're afraid to be. Being doesn't require you to do anything, but doing keeps you, sub, uh, uh, keeps you distracted from really discovering the truth of your being. Being is that magnetic force you were speaking of. Instead of saying, I need this, I need this, come to me, come to me, right? Being goes, this is me. I command you to come to me because I am the truth of me. But we have a lot of attention whores, and I'm not speaking of women, I'm just saying you're whoring for attention, male or female, it's not a gender thing. You're whoring yeah. for attention, you're whoring for approval, you're whoring for acceptance, and you have yet to accept the truth of who you really are. You don't yeah. wanna be because it takes real work to accept you as you are, flaws and all. So what happens is you get addicted to another synonym that means the same thing, stimulation. Karma can be swapped out for stimulation. Well, if the stimulation is gone, the relationship is dead. We gotta spark it again. It needs a new spark. No, you need to sit with the one person that you've got the worst relationship with, which is yourself. And this is why you keep attracting lessons that want to be blessings, but wind up being curses because you still refuse to accept you as you are. Speak to that. Man, man in a nutshell, you man, you said the divine feminine inside, even from inside of the male, starts the thirst trap. Come on, man. Let's go. And, and, and this is this is where you know we're at, and we can build from here. <laughs> and I feel like that. There's first that AA point, as I always mention to everyone, that there's an acceptance that must occur, and then you could go on from there. And I like what you said about that being, mm -hmm. because being is moving without motivation. Woo, keep going, keep going, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the closer you get to the center, this is what the ancestors were saying about the subjective plane. 
you know, you're getting closer and closer to that center. So you're not using that motivative tool that you always had to use. I, that's like a drug. Like, ah, I need my motivation today. Right. And now you got a new kind of quantum generator. We've been putting in a new motor. Mm. And this one runs on the energy of the force of magnetic attraction. Ooh, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep going, brother. Keep going. <laughs> so, I mean, just first of all, okay, so I wanted to give thanks. You know, there's something that happens when the powerful minds, bodies, and souls come together. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. All that's out there also in this co-creative force just saying we need this right now brother Zoe is here as a conduit <laughs> because <laughs> you can get him going <laughs> you know, he's gonna drop your jewels it's like you know getting getting them to come out you're like come on out <laughs> you know what I mean and you know so just bearing witness to that and just how imperative that is for us in this time Cause like I guess today I saw him celebrating Uzi Vert just for dropping up into some kids' video, and I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> this brother's trying to put the relationships and the homes and the kids and the children all back together. So you know, just to you know refresh it, man. Mm -hmm. I just want to let everybody know that there's always this awareness that we have that when knowledge like this starts to come out, it means that we're getting close to something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And knowledge is always present, but it's not really delivered until a certain point. Now, I can't say it's nine billion on the line, even though by in the future, they may be studying this. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> have AI trying to figure it out. <laughs> yes. And it will still bear witness to them the same thing, which we all should have learned about this template within our family. Yes. And yes. how that building block right there, you don't got to go and reinvent the wheel. You just have to, the, as we say, you are the mission. You have to put that back together inside of yourself mm -hmm. if you want to receive, because it's a reward-based system, if you want to receive what it is that is your allotment. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in all of this, as we've seen in so much symbolism, as the Great Mother says, the first one is the gift. Mm -hmm. The next one you'll have to earn. <laughs> Mm. And for us, I feel like we're in this universe of university learning how, because when you earn something like, just like what we saw in our mother's house, when you start earning your own money, now you can start making some rules, mm -hmm. you, can start, you know, moving on. But until then you're at the house and these are the rules. And I love that, you know, we're here looking at the, the building blocks and the core fundamentals to be able to restore ourselves. Because in this time, especially since the wind gone blow, these are the things that we need to be anchoring ourselves to and saying to ourselves in, at like mantras to maintain that balance daily because you and I both know that every day you're on the ocean. So how the wind's going to toss about is not really, it's like playing football and not expecting to get hit. Something's going to happen, right. but it's all about how you're navigating that experience Right. and utilizing these tools that we're speaking on right now in order to be somewhat of a guidepost, an instrument, let's say that way, yeah. an instrument that you can use to gain bearing on this sea that sometimes is tossing us about. Mm -hmm. And maybe all of us should, if we can stabilize and get our anchors set, still serve as ambulances on the astral plane, still scooping up our brothers and sisters that are actually getting buried in this... Uh, this war, this nether world of deep ocean, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But still seeing that it's all a lesson. And not, not only that, it's like not every parent teaches with, hey, you know, you can have everything you want because that's not always unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning that for myself as being a father is that, you know, you see your children and you see how you always have to toe that line with them about, you know, not wanting to stunt their growth and creativity with the, with the rule but also not wanting them to be able to go without some kind of guideline. And that's really for all of us right now. Like, I feel like even coming in here and building with you, getting the opportunity to listen to the infinite jewels is amazing for me. And we shall always enjoy our mentors and those that have set out their lives and actually put a pillar up somewhere so that it becomes a guidepost for others. And so that to me is the most unique thing right now because it's rare and precious. Right. So I you know sometimes folks be back there with the popcorn and they just waiting on the next. <laughs> <laughs> but take a 
the ball for them and let them know, remember, you know, this is really also imperative. This knowledge that we're talking about, it does actually mean life and death. And the interesting part about it is many are already dead. Right. The state that we're describing that you would be able to achieve once you get this into alignment, then you would be able to identify what it is to really be alive. And so, again, that's the reward for us. So, yeah, man, wow. Like, you know, I really had a – man, I, just tonight, man, I kind of was like, okay, let's see where this goes, this new moon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're here planting seeds, and right. I feel like that this is the most – important time and this also I want to tell everybody because everything is relative to now you plant a seed right now on this new moon don't let nobody steal your harvest you're going to have to steal for 30 days basically or excuse me one term of the session of the moon 14 and the 14 you're going to have to let this go its cycle right and then while you're going through this process because of course everything's quantifying we three years we three months away from the end of the year we rolled through this you know, let this be the time that you're able to say, okay, I'm going to plant this. I'm not going to let – I like the parable of the sower a lot because it really lets you know what you're dealing with. If you know right. how to read that properly to who they're referring to about how you could get plucked up and your joy could get stolen. And, you know, I, I, I said this one thing in the Goddess and Explorer build that really hit home, and it was like in your relationship, when that thing is fresh and everything is on point, man, it doesn't even matter where you are. You could be on a – a, a, a mattress, you know how you just on the mattress, no box spring on the floor in an apartment with no furniture and hugged up and like we made it, boo. <laughs> right. <laughs> house with the jacuzzi, the whole nine, maybe about 400, 500,000 sitting in the garage, whatever, and the place to go later on and all the bread and be arguing with somebody you with and just be totally up in the frequency like that is not even what you have. It's letting right. us know, as you've so proficiently proved to people over the years and helping them with this, that in the relationship is the key to the dynamics of what's going on around you on a daily basis and how you're governing your energy and whether you really will have the will to make it through this, right? Mm. Because everything that we're projecting is coming from the energy that we're accumulating within our relationship. Mm -hmm. And if we burn up all of that energy and incessant fire learning from some beings that don't even know how to get taught themselves, then we end up being the forfeiters uh, from just following that direction rather than following who we truly are. Mm -hmm. So be original, <laughs> mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Like that, mm. that seems to be trending and, you know, a lot of folks having a hard time snapping back into it with the curated digital life that is going on right now. And we've all been a part of it. But I'm also seeing the folks that really are making moves have always been the ones that come out in their odd form. I call it the observer that I was able to identify that, yes, the, te the, the student was a, definitely a role. And then this master. Right. But then I realized above the master was the observer. And being able to shift those three gears, because you're going to be observer sometime in life or master sometime the, or student the, sometime. Hey, and I would just add one thing to the term observer. I would add the objective observer. Yes. The non judgmental objective observer is above the master. Speak about that. Well, it, he lets the wheel spin. Like, if there's always up, see, the master is a job. It's almost like there is a governance. There's a, a, a basically a tutelage. There is a, 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 a mantle, okay? So in, with that mantle, that mantle is like uh, somebody putting a yoke really on you to pull. Like it's not like some of you want to just jump up and be the leader all the time, a real leader, right? So the observer is that final point when the leader through accolades and through actual clear proofs, which are the actions, are now complete or feel the complete fulfillment of those actions and is able to actually sit back. I find that you don't really see many masters able to actually shift finally. It's like six gear on the highway, headed to Florida mm -hmm. with the 12, six gear. This means that there's nothing anymore to prove here. I'm just going to bask in the glow of the field in which that I've been able to sustain and project. That's the elder's role. Right. You see, that's that, but that, so having that rather than even just, I want to be the master, you know what I mean? And 
This is, you know, these are key fundamentals and components. And I'm sure like that what we're doing right now for everyone is we're bringing this in the vernacular of 2020. This and we're speaking your language and we're giving it to you the way in which you would understand it. Right. 2,000 years ago, the metaphors and all the things we're going to be using is going to be still talking about the same thing. This is why I love the ancient books because they just, they go back in on this. They can get you with one sentence if you really know how to unfold that lotus. Mm -hmm. You know, but life right now, it's like I found that you had to almost like perform and entertain. Right. It wasn't a, to just have the truth for our people. They wanted to see you tap dance. Right. So, you know, this is uh, an extra work that we're actually doing here. And I feel like that also connects with, as you said, the observer or the objective observer and also even the overachiever who knows that the more lenses that I can look through, the more beings that I can actually connect with and see and experience and existence with. These folks all up in these, these uh, universities and all up in these places, they love to have people they can experiment with, hear how they think, see how they move. So mm -hmm. they're huge on their observer role. And sometimes we're only just looking for what we can either agree to or not agree to. Right. And that's what I was saying about the gear, because the master is like not agree to and the student is like agree to. We need to have that 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 other component. And I like the way you said it's also objective because this doesn't mean laziness. A lot of people get observer confused with and they be like, well, I'm just observing. They start using that word. It's like this is a, a whole nother way in which you can cultivate your being. Mm -hmm. It gives mm -hmm. you again that space to be able to also breathe because this is a high stakes world. And sometimes what you have to push out every single day and what you have to do is oftentimes well beyond the level of energy that you may have access to until you get yourself wired properly. So let us just all realize as beings in this realm together, and we're not together because we want to be. It's, a, it's we're together because there's no other choice. Unity is not a choice. We it's have just to like be. water. You don't <laughs> right. like want to be you know, outside of that containment. So all of this together for us is like the growing process. And I feel like that many of us, like wh what it means to be divine masculine and what it means to be divine feminine, this is the university for that. Because you really get a chance to see what are the outcomes of the choices that you're making. You know, it's a beautiful design in itself, even if it's a simulation because you even had this thing called pain. You know, like right now on video games, they, they're now trying to bring in the pain factor. They got to suit that. When you get hit, you feel the punching force. I'm like, oh, right. they're going in the wrong direction with this. But it's really that concept of trying to create more realism through the experience, through the emotional centers. And, and so people, we have to realize people don't that we're understand. also very passionate. You're saying something so powerful, and I, and I want to kind of interject just a little bit because you're onto something so big here. People don't understand. The ancient Buddhist and the Hindu said, this place was Maya. The Sanskrit word Maya means illusion. The ancient Christian said, no, it's not this world, it's the next world, right? This is what these young souls on this planet don't understand. This might be the SAT for living, this plane. This plane might just be the SAT for living. You might have to graduate here first in order to truly experience that word we mentioned, communion. Communion, the root of it is union. That's the same as yoga, yoked. This is what unequally yoked means. It means you have to be in communion with someone. Yeah. You don't know how to be in communion with someone because you haven't accepted you. Yes. Yes. So again, and you you right there. I mean, this, man, come on, man. Let's keep going with this. <laughs> it's because in in the illusion, the okay. So we we break down the word. We see the word has to do with building. Like that scion is the same reason why mansion scion is on the back of mansion. It's it's a construct of something. Right. Ilu is light in itself, so it's a construct of light. So the big test here is, is actually learning how to work with or realize how light works, which right. is basically frequencies. 
Ooh. And so that's your attitude. That's your, your relationships. That's everything that you're and until. And I love this until you figure that out. Why am I going to let you into the council of elders so you can disrespect everybody? Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> In fact, it seems like this may even be the place where somebody may get sent. When they oscillate into that frequency where all of a sudden they can't no longer respect the holy ceremony and sessions and parades. And in fact, there is an actual text that explains where Brisbati walked away from the rest of the pageantry or the rest of the pantheon and gods because Indra came all up in there drunk, <laughs> disrespecting the tutelage and the lineages and all of what had already been developed. Ooh. And Indra was drunk on the fire himself. And so if we bring it back just full 360, it just means that time out happens when you are not aware of how much your light framework is affecting all the rest of everybody else's bill. Mm -hmm. Because how that story ends is still everybody when chilling out for a while, the pageantry continued, but Brisbati left because he was refusing to be disrespected. And the light, the light was not the same. People start arriving into the ceremony like, it's a little dimmer in here. And they'd be like, yeah, because brisbati has gone. And it got to a point where, and this is a metaphor, where people started leaving the holy ceremony to go and find the first one who was disrespected. And so if we take our time, this life, to figure out if we're even disrespecting ourselves. Right. We have to, cause look, we've already proven that we've been doing things that are not in our best interest and have been suggesting to us from force that want to bring us into decay. Right. But the suggestion, then we actually took that suggestion and applied it from whatever way, shape, or form, but that means that we did the action. Right. So at that point, in order to re-honor and repair oneself into their, your original status, the power of what it is that you're doing needs to become clear to you. Mm -hmm. And again, that illusionary power, as we know most things that are very powerful and can act on someone are invisible, that illusionary power and not realizing what's going on behind the scenes rather than just taking everything in front of you for face value is really, again, one of the lessons that we have to learn in order to be able to stand up right. And that's interesting, again, because even when we mentioned Homo erectus in a, in a word being noted that he was upright, to write something is to straight them, because mm -hmm. in metaphysics, we know that animals are known as, in their term, the bent, right. meaning that they are bent in a way that their energy flows in a certain scenario, while upright, our energy flows in another. And to really live into that responsibility means that we're stepping in the shoes of our ancestors. And I can say for sure, if they have us in the sim and they're just watching us go through the process and trip over ourselves, that's all fine. But when it's time to get out of this loop-to-loop -loop course, or sometimes they call it the curse, when it's finally come out of when you got to come out of that course or curse or lesson and you're ready to now go into who you are, this is the test that is before us. And now, as you said, it now, reflects everywhere in life and who we're with. Now, now watch this. Hmm. Oh, here, 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 here. This is how you, this is how you graduate, right? This is how you graduate. So the ancient Hindu spoke of samsara, the endless cycle of birth and death, right? Lessons being learned. Oh, I didn't get that lesson this time. I got to come back, right? We spoke of karma, which is action, to the ancient Hindu. In order to stop the endless cycle of samsara, they said, you got to stop the cycle of action. Right? You have to stop the cycle of karma. How do you stop the cycle of karma? You got to defeat fear. So the Hindu who came out of the Hindu belief system and said, no, no, I, I'm no longer a prince anymore, and I'm not that anymore. I'm going to create Buddhism, right? Siddhartha Gautama came out of Hinduism and gave us Buddhism. What is the primary linchpin to Buddhism? It's attachment, breaking of attachment. So attachment is connected to samsara, 
which is connected to action. This is and why it, <laughs> this, this is this the Uhuras and this is the Devas. Yes. And, and this is why. And, and again, I go back to say this, and then I'm gonna throw it to you. You have to say to yourself, I need to break up with stimulation. My relationship must be predicated on the curriculum that I'm getting from my partner so that I can grow up spiritually. If I can't grow up spiritually with you, if you refuse to be a simultaneous teacher and pupil with me in this process, which is a shared experience, yet an individual one at the same time, because your lesson ain't my lesson and my lesson ain't your lesson, but this is a shared experience. If I can't do this with you, and I'm not talking about Netflix and chill. That's the icing. That's, that's, that's the side stuff that ain't, which, which really in today's society is the front stuff. It should be on the side, right? But because we live in a society that is spiritually apathetic, because we live in a society that's about stimulation, we lose sight of why we attract who we attract, and for what purpose. The Buddhist told us attachment. What makes attachments hold so powerful? Fear. Fear and ego. The moment I say this is us, this is who we are, we take on an identity. You take my last name, we take on an identity. Whatever you identify with, you got to fight for. How can you identify with that which is uh, uh, un unconditional? I, I need you to hear that. How can you identify with something that at its highest level is unconditional? If you really loved your partner, could you love them away from you? Meaning, through you, they grew beyond you. Could you celebrate that graduation? See, we have to break up with the tenets of fear and ego in order to truly commune. We don't know how to commune because we're in competition with the external. Speak to that. That's, we're right in the face of it again. How does this keep happening? <laughs> the free Literally the, re the record. You know, so, so we set the record straight here on this frequency band that that cord, just like we see the child, that's the tether. That's literally like the ejection pod that we were talking about. <laughs> that's symbolically like, okay, well, now you must be moved out of the space mm -hmm. because now you're going to go and roll out on this individual journey. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready to come back into this center and navigate back into this direction, as all the masters have Proficiently been tolling, telling you, you need to now become unmovable. You need to basically stop coming into that yin yang conflictive that's pushing you out further. You got to bring that thing back in so that way you come back into that nucleus. Mm -hmm. And it's you know because if we just if we just look at the bio framework as it is, one mode is used like an astronaut's tether to get them further and further out. As long as you keep working with that energy, you'll keep going further and further out. But when you feel like that now you have lost the establishment of your connection from the motherboard and home base and who you truly are, now you must do the opposite work to reel yourself back in. And when you're coming back in, all of those experiences, just like how the DNA moves, it's coming back in with it. Only as a confirmation, though, mm -hmm. not as something that has been learned. Mm -hmm. And this was wild because in the origin point, all things are there. So it's not coming back with, hey, I found out something. It's coming back with, oh, so you figured it out? Mm -hmm. That point in life, you know, where, again, for us, it, it takes being real. And as you said, 
you know, this karma, you know, it's going to keep pushing you through that and testing you in the ultimate is with your relationship. Because, yes, if that that final test, if you may, comes and says, are you willing to lose this to gain it all? Because that's always what I mean from real masters, folks who really rode out that I talked to. They talked before that process of how they would get out there. And then it would start happening. And then they would think of something here that they still wanted to do or be with her. And it would slam them back into the body. So, see, I want people to still understand that you use these two powers to navigate the space. But if you're only using one, you're going to be so far out on the rim lost. Otherwise, <laughs> you have contact with Central. Right, right. Right, and again, Sanskrit, samsara, right? Mm. The unending circle of death, life, and birth, and rebirth, right? Buddhism, attachment. What does attachment, dukkha, dukkha. Attachment leads to suffering. What is the opposite of dukkha, which is suffering? Sukha, which is the same as uh, uh, nirvana or samadhi, right? Uh, this liberation. You can't be liberated in your relationships if you refuse to accept your curriculum that is reflected back to you from your partner. This is how you liberate yourself from that which you've gone through. You want to liberate, you went through it for a reason. It was designed to grow you up. This is why I teach claim over blame. Because when you blame, there, there is no responsibility. But if we're looking at the cycle of samsara, could you just be suffering from spiritual amnesia? You don't remember, you chose these parents, you chose these experiences that came with the hurt you feel now. So claim is power. It's empowering to say, I am a co-creator of this reality. I am a co-creator of this relationship experience. And as a co-creator, I can rewrite my narrative. How many, how many people you know right now have turned being a victim into an empowering negative, uh, narrative? We don't need that in order to heal. You don't have to empower your victimization. Your victimization was just a vehicle to get you to your highest level of strength. I need you to hear that. I don't know if people are really listening your victimization was a vehicle to transport you to your highest level of consciousness, of revelation, self-revelation. But because we live in a society that's about vengeance, that's about get back, that's about recompense, we get caught up in being victims and we try to take a weak, passive aggressive strong stance by saying yes I'm a victim no your victimhood can lead you to your ultimate victory in this life which is graduation do you want to graduate or do you want to continuously build coping mechanisms for your partners to date in order for you to feel safe well, I went through this and I went through that. And, and you know what? Uh, in order to protect myself from that ever happening again, that's because you're still in victimhood mentality. So you think you can create a set of standards, beliefs, principles, and ideas that another human being who is a work in progress is going to stick to. If you're going to heal, you must reveal. Speak to the part about revealing, Seven. And that's full circle right there because it's not just full circle, it's the dot in the middle. <laughs> full circle and the dot in the middle. 
it gives a person the ability to see themselves like we look at it like a DVD spin mm -hmm. you make back center and then you go up once you go up you're able to then view that's the revealing every single thing, how it really was and hopefully everybody gets to a substance in their life and I do believe that's what this is also about I call it the chosen mm -hmm. And one final question, you know, because I'm the big question, you know, always on the quest in the mind. When I got the infinite wheels turning, you could just ask the question and then it'll give you the answer. And I asked the question, so what is the chosen? So I'm back in the, the, high, the higher self in the corner now. Let's see what he's going to come up with. <laughs> right. He hit the one liner, time. And I sat for a while on that. It said the only thing that is separating people from the from the point in which they would e that they would be elected into the state in which you would call chosen is time. And how much time some folks have in the prism is going to determine how long it's going to be for them to realize the game of lights. Mm -hmm. And in all of this. I say, like you, we've been elaborating on in this process, that if you can get someone with you, I mean, more than one, get as many as you can. If you could become a reflection of it, I mean, as we know in this point-to-point -point system, you make it happen for yourself and start reflecting through others, that's going to allow this experience to really start shaping into the frequencies that allow us to not be always going through I would just say lessons is almost like the net, the less, less energies, the, the rudimentary things. Like think about it. We're even having a conversation about how to treat people who are really in it for us and have dedicated themselves to us and you know, how we can go and be abrasive to them. Now we need instructions on how not to do that. So to me, those are signs themselves of that we're in this process of really learning lessons. And if we didn't want to be so grown and adult all the time and try to take on that mantle, then we maybe would be right at it and realize that so we can get on with the lesson. I mean, I really, I really like what, where you're at with this and, and what you've been delivering. And I also love this build that we had today because I feel like that some are going to have to revisit this from time to time and really keep extracting because we said the same thing really in different ways over and over and over. And this was in order to give each person a way to see into themselves. And so, you know, I'm, I'm at that point now. My cup, my cup is full. And it's like, yeah, I mean, because I, I see so much. And, and that's why I spend a lot of time, you know, developing these solutions. But as you said, if you can't really get it right at home first, yes. everything that you develop is going to be a reflection of what you are still dealing with in that space. Right. And that's what I've learned in all of this, that it doesn't matter. No one can produce. And I like this. You cannot produce anything greater than yourself. <laughs> so there won't be anything that you're going to be able to design externally that is going to end up being the savior of you. <laughs> right. <Ooh>. And let <laughs> accomplish it in that right here. And so this makes the responsibility that this is the empowerment, right? Now you have all the power. I love what you say when, hey, do you know, you can't go into the blame game because now you give away all your power. Now it's up to them to figure out when they're going to release you. And that's why I don't need, I don't play that game at all in the reality Ooh. period about Ooh. someone having more power and more awareness to me. I always see it as it all depends on what kind of situation you think you're in. Mm -hmm. Because I was in some crazy situations. I was able to get myself out because of the order of magnitude of the scenario. Mm -hmm. But if I'm sitting in like a boiled frog, not realizing exactly how much imperative it is for me to get my household as an energy charging station rather than an energy diminishing station, Ooh. then I, I have my priorities mixed up, right? Yes. And, and that's where the grown man, grown woman comes in because you got to set your house straight. Literally, you know, getting that foundation and actually realizing how to balance your elements. And of course, you know, this doesn't mean become some robotoid because, you know, we're very illustrious people. 
So it, it means figuring out how to channel that energy the proper way in order to actually make it grow something, make it work for you. What I learned in life was when examining all these metaphysical agents that what was really out of what was really the issue was things were out of place. Mm -hmm. You were putting what's supposed to be on the ground all in your eye. Mm -hmm. you, you were putting what's supposed to be protected out in the back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it and this is all of these elements and the, all these roles and these characters that are playing out. And when we start realizing that we can take even the most craziest things that we're seeing going on in the reality and use that as a force of empowerment to actually keep moving our vessel into the direction that we want it to go. And then ultimately this becomes just a simulator in itself where our parents show us every single mode, every mode of thought, different forms of the geometrics and how things can be bent and created. So that way, when you have the opportunity to have your own, you know exactly what you want in it. And I don't think anyone is going to manifest any kind of reality where they would be arguing and fighting and, 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 and ill and hurt and not wanting to be there. So this for sure says that this is the space, like Delbert Blake just say, you gotta do this one time at least. This is the space where you gain the awareness of how all of that came about so you'll know how to navigate yourself into this future and that's that's the responsibility right mm -hmm. like we, also how we navigate ourselves for many of us it determines especially if you have the divine masculine activated it actually determines how others navigate mm -hmm. we're designed to assist each other in, just like a book you may read this krishnamurti book it spent him for he spent 40 years 50 years attaining to that level of awareness to then put it into a work. Now you come and drink all of that 40 years on top of your 30, 40 years, whatever it was, when you assess that and grow from there. Right. And so long as each human being, and I, I guess we should, I should say this before closing out, the rewards are opening up. Depends on how you look at it. The rewards to this is when you do get yourself in the harm, you're actually able to really see clearly your uniqueness. Mm. And uniqueness is your fruit from your own tree that is your contribution to all of this you have this spin why many of us are like 99.9% .9 there is that 0.1% though it's the same as the spiral on the back of your head and on the bottom of your foot that there is something that you do have that is so precious there is only one of them and when we calculate value even on Terra we know if something is only one of them, that's, I mean, the prices is going up. And this is why for each person, unlocking that awareness of who you are within yourself and then beginning to see your value, which is a responsibility of maintaining that environment because, yeah, someone's pulling your energy or pulling you, pushing you down. The value is mentally going down. And this is why it's so therapeutic to even come into these sessions where, since we all are experiencing this in some way, shape, or form, we gain these astral, elemental, physical tools to be able to do the work to actually keep what I call repairing the chain. Right. This is the DNA that each of us still have the responsibility since we're using this to maintain it because those that will come behind us will actually still have to use the same thing. Your DNA, what you touch, what you create, all those things will continue to go on as reflections of you. And so if you're maintaining the chain in real time, this is how you create an infinite beam of awareness throughout your cognizance because you would literally have stored all of those sequences. Mm -hmm. And of course that is that is attainment, that is, you know, which, you know, these are words. Right. And I believe what me and Zoe have been bringing forth here is how those words really become actions, right? How the word right. becomes flesh. Becomes <laughs> being, become yes. Out with this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, listen, bro, for all the people that are here, for all the people that are paying attention, can you just give them a brief breakdown of where they can find you how they can connect with you. I, 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 listen, you, you mentioned grateful, thankful, appreciative, and I just want you to understand, man, it's mutual. I thank you for taking the time 
to share your immense knowledge and wisdom with my audience. I appreciate you greatly, brother. And we have a mutual brother who been yes. he's been trying to connect us, you know, yes. for years. And then yes. we it, it finally happened yesterday. So I just want to say the timing was right. It's a new moon. It was supposed to happen today. And I'm just thankful, 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 thankful that you were able to come and share. But please inform my group of people who are here right now that may have never saw you or been exposed to you. Where can they find you? How can they support? How can they rock with your movement as well? Oh, man, absolutely. You know, first and foremost, you know, I would definitely want to send lots of respect and love to our brother, Lemuel LaRoche, Chesson community. Y'all may know him as Life the Grio. And he's been putting in the work in the community and really working with the children. And he's been doing that for 25 years. And I've seen that physically, personally, myself. And so, obviously, he was very instrumental in, in, in me and Brother Zoe getting in here today. And he was right. Because he had a hunch about this. And he was right. So, <laughs> or to in the future, you know, you know, if you got to call me in at some point, but let's call him in. Like, da -da 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 -da. you know, <laughs> Right. I'm, I'm right. definitely in, in uh, I'm going to arrive, right? Right. And uh, if anybody wants to check us out, what we're doing, like we're always working with these innovations. Like I'm really back at ground zero, dressing the elephant in the room with the whole financial thing and what's emerging in the future, automated wealth, these kind of things. And so I felt like that if I had all this metaphysical knowledge, it should be applicable to those things too. And I found out that it was. We're at secretenergy.com. We put a very polished social network there for conscious for the conscious community. I will definitely make sure I get Brother Zoe in on the spiritual or metaphysical advisors page and also the show because man, you know, this kind of knowledge and this kind of awareness coming to humanity is exactly what we need. So I'm at secretenergy.com. I'm also at on YouTube on Interstanding. And this is where I've been on YouTube for 10 years and just building with this knowledge from day one. And just, this is about what I say is Interstanding. This is basically about you. I always say it's either gonna be the man or the mission and choose the mission because the man can be compromised from time to time. This right. is about you on your personal quest and whether you can utilize this knowledge to get yourself to the next level. What I'm doing is I'm letting you kind of look at my diary, and but I gotta go through the experience myself. I'm definitely not gonna get left behind here because I was trying to teach this as a master when I should have been the observer, right? <laughs> so if right. To the community also that's there, one of the main emphasis that we've been placing on things right now is the geolocation. And, and this means that it's important to kind of know in the physical who's in your area that is resonating with where you're at. I feel like especially now it be, it's, it's, it creates more of like, oh, okay, I got somebody three miles away that's on those same ideals and starting to link up with them or at least through the chat and saying, hey, you know, I'm over here. Um, this is imperative for us right now because that allows us to take this instrument that we've been using right now with this whole virtual component and start bringing it into the physical, which is what the community has been asking for the most. The virtual engagement is great because we can broadcast all over the world and it's on wax. We can re bring it back around again and edit it and all that. But also there is that we charge off of each other. Mm -hmm. That was another big thing. Maybe we can really come back in another day and just talk about that. But you experience it every day in your life when someone's really vibing on you the right way, you feel like you just had a meal. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that means that we do have to make the effort, especially in this reality, which is I, it's really more built. You think it, you think one thing, but it's, it's a whole nother thing because that isolation, which is necessary to spiritual growth, also can become it can flip and become one's poison if you don't realize just how communal we really are and how certain parts of the essence of who you are does need another person to actually be fueled to get fuel for that. Look at and that. that does create a yin-yang relationship because why would you need something that you already have? Mm. You need to earn that from somebody else who has it and how they do it. And that's why I love to see the divine masculine and divine feminine in its proper role because it becomes a tutelage within itself for me to not, for you to be like me, like one of those futuristic movies where everybody wear the same suit and shit. Right. <laughs> not for you to be like me, for you to be you and for me to learn who you really are. And so this is what we're always engaged in, in these kind of techniques and, 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 and exercises that allow us to actually be able to do that. Right. So, so much brother for, you know, let me have the opportunity even let, you know, your, your, I mean, cause you have an audience that is not only in the know, but it's completely organic. Yes. You know, 
you think that you see that 500,000 up there and I'm telling you all them folks in India you know no offense to India but they be you know it's interesting to you know when you have a crowd that's really there for you or uh well, I wouldn't say a crowd but a group of beings that are there for you it's because that you've delivered something in their lives that's of value mm -hmm. and so we see that value and I wanted to definitely say give thanks also to our sister Sarah back there you know on the wheels Sarah so without the H yeah <laughs> Yeah, she made it happen for me today. I'm so appreciative. <laughs> yeah, you know, we still thanks. So, hey, uh, before we wrap it up, let me just say this. I need you guys to sign up to my master class, my relationship master class, five and a half hours. It's at zowhatmasterclass.com. If you appreciated what we were doing here, this is an intensive of that. So go to zowhatmasterclass.com. It's already recorded. It's four modules. It's five and a half hours long. There's a relationship toolbox with videos and book lists. It's all there. So I'm asking and I'm urging everyone who hasn't signed up, please go sign up today, right now, zowhatmasterclass.com. And once again, Seven, thank you, brother. And and for sure, we got to do a part two to this. We got to do a part two because we really just scraped the surface. You know what I'm saying? We got to do a and part two, man. We went, and deep. I thank you. We, we, went, we went deep, but we were able to get back. You know, sometimes you go so <laughs> deep, it's just like the audience, you got to let them go. But it's like, man, they're going to drown down there. No, nah, they're so going to be all right. They're going to be all right. If they drown, they just drown. <laughs> but there's going to be some of them that make it back up. Like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Man, no, man, but this was great, and I would love to have you back sometime soon. And I will say this. Please, everybody that's in the chat room, show some love for Sarah. Sarah, put up your cash app so people can send you some love, send you some bread for coming here and running this show for me. Please look out for Sarah. Thank you so much. Seven, let's connect again, brother. I appreciate you, fam. Absolutely. I loved it. Thank you so much. All right, now. All right, hold on.